God, it is the 4th of July weekend and we are here for the seventh round of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. It is hot, it is awesome. It's the 4th of July and the fans are already out in their masses. It's the most infamous place for them. It is Redbud. Now you may remember this ski jump, it's just after the start straight. This is where Michael Essie a couple of years ago got landed on quite a few times. Uh, he was pretty lucky that day, but it's amateur day today, they're already racing. However, look at these braking bumps already with just the small bikes out. These are huge. Now tomorrow, I would definitely make sure you have a look at this because this could get pretty gnarly tomorrow. Friday afternoon, I'm wandering in the pits and I walk into Rambo, or maybe Mike Alessi. You are fully 4th of july it up right now, Mike. It is 4th of July weekend, so just uh, having fun. And uh, this track, it's got uh, some memories for you, shall we say. Yeah. You were rather lucky here, weren't you, a couple years ago? I was, uh, yeah, but uh, that was in the past. Uh, it's a new, fr fresh weekend here at Redbud, so looking forward to having a good weekend. And last weekend was a good weekend for you. You know, things are coming together better. Yeah, last weekend was more just... Uh, uh, trying to get the points, uh, got hurt at Bud's Creek with with my shoulder and my rib, which was unfortunate because I was running third. But uh, you know, stuff happens. And uh, last weekend I had to just do the best that I could, get the points that I could obviously achieve, and uh, end up eighth overall, which wasn't too bad for me. And uh, but this weekend I'm starting to feel more 100%, and uh, hopefully have another good race. I saw that moment where you where you pulled off and you started to slow down where I saw you grab your left hand side and I said something's just happened there in his ribs. Um, that was pretty painful and it was like the last lap that you had to go out there but it, it was definitely something that you needed to leave the race for. Yeah for sure. It, the, the rib popped out and basically it's like sucking air through a straw. I couldn't even breathe so uh, it was pretty much uh, I was useless out there so I uh, pulled it in and try to not do any worse damage or make another worse mistake and crash and be worse but uh, yeah, it's Red Bud this weekend. Uh, not going to be a downer. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to have a great weekend. I'm going to get two good starts, hopefully whole shots, and uh, take over that points lead in the starts. I'm two points down from the, being first in the points on the starts. So if I get I get both starts, I'll be first. So The whole shot king has to be back when he looks like Rambo. I mean, there's no question about it. Best of luck this weekend, Mike Lessie. Thank you. Thanks. Georgia Alessi. That sounds <laughs> weird because that sounds like we're married. That would be odd. O only one brother. One brother. No, no sister. But if I Twins, did, this, right? this would be her. She's, Do she's we look yours. like each other? No. Not at all. I'm trying to be like Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> son is winning. What's his name? Mark Marinsek. That's Oldsby awesome. Illinois. Oglesby, Illinois. Number 263. Brent Presnell, Trey Kennard's race mechanic. Don't think you could possibly be any more American today. That's right. We're American Honda, so we got to go full American. And what says more American than aviator sunglasses and bandanas? I mean, I've been watching a lot of Duck Dynasty, so I was heavily influenced. Is that what the, the mustache is about, too? Yeah, you know, I'm trying to grow the beard out, but I... It just doesn't work for me. I don't know. See, these are the serious things in life that yeah. race bike mechanics have to contend with. Facial hair on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. I mean, this is the stuff that people don't really know. Like, yeah. we're on the line. Stuff's running through our minds. Like, this is what's going on. Yeah. are like, man, the camera adds 10 pounds. I better suck in really tight right now. And, you know. But, no, nobody cares about that. It's all about the rider being focused and whatnot. Those, oh. guys, those guys just pin it. You know, we're the ones that struggle with, you know, everyday life. Brent Presnell, he's just told me exactly how it is. He knows what's up. We are talking to Brent Presnell, but look at his masterpiece work here. Mr. Trey Kennard's bike. Blue rims. Blue, red, and white. Even the rental. This is the American flag right here. And the handlebars. This is truly American. Friday afternoon and I have found Andrew Shaw a second place in that first moto, a bike length from first place. 
What came together for you last week? Uh, the start and put in a lot of great laps at the beginning. I got stuck behind, or oh, I didn't get stuck. I got stuck, sucked in behind James, which is a great opportunity. Had some uh, fast lap times and kind of separated from the pack. So it was a huge step for me, a lot better than the last few races and definitely helped with some confidence and uh, gave me some excitement again as well. And going into the second moto, uh, you obviously didn't have that top three finish. Uh, do you think you got tired or did you, that start just wasn't as great? Yeah, I went down in the first turn and I uh, had a great charge for about half the yeah. moto, got up to 15th. And then, yeah, I, I got really tired. So I went, <laughs> I was just trying to survive. It was a big day for me. And uh, definitely, I think if I could hold it together mentally a little better, I, I'd have better stamina and fitness. But I was just happy to make steps and, uh, you know, improve a little bit because the first few races were miserable. Well, you've got the hot weather here. It's always famously hot here at Red Bar, which you are used to down in Texas. Congratulations on last week. It was great to see you up there and uh, good luck for this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. Michael Byrne, we have not spoken to you this year so far. Give me a little update on how you've been. You haven't had a reason to speak to me yet. Uh, I've just been, you know, trying to get stronger coming back from the injury. Um, just uh, trying to make progress each week, each week you know. It's, it's been pretty tough. Uh, it's a good field out there right now, so uh, I made improvements last weekend. Uh, top 15 both motos, so just got to keep working at it and get up there in the top 10. Well, obviously, last time we saw you was Unadilla. Uh, that's where you had your crash, crashing in first place. And it was a very bad injury. So coming back from it, there's been a lot of hard work. Yes, there's been a lot of hard work for sure. And then, uh, you know, obviously to have an injury at that at that point in the race was, you know, it was pretty heartbreaking. But, uh, you know, it was also motivating too, you know, just to prove that I can do that and, uh, you know, keep the motivation going and uh, just try and keep working at it. you got a great team here behind you that you've been with, you know, for a few years. Um, so as far as everything like that's going, how is it? I know the team's been great. I've been here uh, three years now. Um, you know, it's built so much in the three years that I've been here, which is, you know, awesome. So now we have the support of KTM and, you know, obviously BTO has been there the whole time and Fly and everybody. So, um, you know, a great group of guys and a great team. And you got Bubba's Burgers. I mean, what more could you ask for on 4th of July? I know, right? They're delicious. Yeah. Well, best of luck this weekend to you at Red Bud, and it's great to see you back. All right, thanks. Friday afternoon, hanging out with Jake Barmer. Now, we haven't spoken too much. We've not had a chance to really get to know you. Tell me a little bit about the team you're riding for. I'm riding for Crosley Radio, Ride Assurance, Beeline, h and Contracting. And basically, they're all big companies from outside of motocross, um, just friends of me and my dad. And uh, they've all stepped up really big to help out and get this whole setup together and help me go to every round of the Outdoor Nationals. It's pretty cool. I was going to say, you have a really cool setup going on here. I mean, you're not with the factory teams like this, but this setup looks like you are. Yeah. So how's it been going for you? Uh, it's been going pretty good. This is my first year for the outdoor stuff. Um, I've been hovering right around the 20th spot pretty much every weekend except for High Point. I kind of struggled there in the mud in practice and ended up not qualifying. So other than that, it's been going really good. Just a great learning experience. Friday afternoon and we find Ivan Tedesco, a face I have not seen for a while. What have you been up to? I've just been back in California at home, just hanging out. I uh, went and bought a two-stroke Yamaha 250. I've been riding that back home and having some fun and uh, just hanging out with the family. Just kind of waiting to see what happens next, what my next move is. You said you've been doing some of the RCH schools too. Yeah, I can. That's why I'm here in Redbud. I came and did the RCH, or not RCH, RCU, excuse Michael. me. <laughs> RCU, uh, you know, Rick Carmichael University. I was one of the coaches along with uh, Emig, Stanton, and, and Ricky. And, uh, first time ever doing anything like that and I had a good time, hung out with a lot of the kids and uh, I'm going to hang out and watch the race tomorrow. Is it weird being here and not racing? It is. It's, you know, it's kind of weird not having that pressure on your shoulders. You know, it's kind of cool to be able to you know, cruise around the pits and talk with everybody. And, you know, it's, usually when you're racing you don't get a chance to do that so it's, it's actually kind of cool. You can also have a beer tomorrow. Yeah, I could if I want. <laughs> Fourth of July beer. Um, when are we going to see you back? Have you got any specific plans? Yeah, as of now, no plans. I'm just you know, kind of on the fence of it. I got a few few things I'm trying to do but you know we'll see what works out and what doesn't and uh, I still love riding on two wheels so we'll see what happens. Well, it's great to see you here Ivan.
as you can see, one of the main track changes we've seen so far is the huge red bud tabletop that was there before. They used to go straight on down here and follow on to where that next tabletop is. However, this year so far we've seen a big change where they immediately go right and up and over the Parts Unlimited Thor banner. Now, so far that's all we know. However, it does look like there's quite a few track changes. Let's go and see what else we can find. This is an off-camber turn. That red bud sign that we said had gone from the other side of the track, it's now here. We have the new red bud sign. One of the most famous things about red bud is its fans, and this is an unusual sight. All I can see is grass. There is no people yet. Tomorrow, that's gonna look a lot different. One more track change, just before they head up to LaRocco's Leap, there's now two little like bends instead of just one which they had before. But I'm Georgia Lindsay, it's Red Bub Weekend, it's 4th of July, let's get racing and we'll catch you tomorrow. America, America, America! Stop, stop, stop. Hey, I just want to let you know, this is America. These colors, these colors, these colors, these colors, these colors don't run. We're celebrating kicking you out. Okay? Congratulations. Wasn't born in the USA. I was even born in Jersey, so I'm like especially proud. So I'm just letting you know, we're celebrating the day things got better when we kicked you out. Just, just kicked you out. Does it count that painting my nails, especially? Oh. Is that American colors or is that the Brit flag? I can't even tell. Australian. Australian, yeah. okay. Fair point. I don't know. <laughs>